Hello. Welcome to Rolls Battery Engineering Webinar Series. Uh, today we're going to talk about low battery cutout settings, uh, otherwise known as LBCO or low voltage disconnect. Just a couple of housekeeping issues since this is a webinar. Um, try to keep these to uh, 30 to 40 minutes with the Q&A session at the end. Uh, everybody's microphones are muted, so we don't get any echoes. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, there's a text field in your GoToMeeting screen at a chat bar. Go ahead and type your questions into there. We'll get to them on the way or as we go through the webinar, or we'll, we'll hit them at the end. If you don't have access to the chat plane, or you are watching this, 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 this webinar on YouTube, uh, two ways you can get feedback or have questions answered is you can email me directly, uh, steve at threat.com, uh, or you can uh, click on the link below um, uh, for comments, and you can post your comments or suggestions or uh, whatever you need to post there. Um, okay, so my contact information, steve at threat.com. I'm the technical services manager for Rolls Battery Engineering. Uh, my phone number, contact information. Uh, this is my number at the plant. Uh, this is my mobile, mobile number, and here's an 800 number if you need to call that, just the extensions 4020. Uh, I am on the road for a couple hundred days a year, so uh, please be patient with me. Sometimes I'm in locations where uh, getting cell phone connection or even answering emails can be difficult. All right, so we're here to talk about low voltage disconnect. Um, we get about 10, 15 calls a week, uh, customers looking for these advice in these settings. Um, you need to really understand what these settings do. Here are some experts for, or, or some, some things that we've taken out of some of the inverter manuals. Uh, basically, what, what low battery cutout settings do is that the inverter shuts off whenever the batteries fall below a certain point. And that's, 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 that's the equivalent across most of the inverter manufacturers. Uh, the one thing you need to be careful of is there is some information in there that isn't a hundred percent. Well, it isn't a hundred percent accurate. Low battery cutout will indeed that it will shut the inverter off when your battery when your battery gets below a certain point for a certain period of time. The problem is is that it doesn't stop the battery from draining completely. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna mark this right here. This function prevents the inverter from draining the battery, the batteries completely. The problem is what happens most common with low battery cutout is you got a cabin out in the middle of the woods, middle of nowhere. You're not at the cabin from November to March. Sometime in January, you get seven feet of snow. Your solar panels are covered up in snow. They start producing the power. The batteries are the, the batteries are starting to discharge. Batteries discharge at a rate of about 10% per month. That does slow down a little bit when cold temperatures, but it still happens. If the batteries were already at a state of discharge, the batteries have a possibility of freezing. But as the battery voltage drops and the inverter goes to low battery cutout, the inverter shuts off all the loads if you've managed to leave the inverter on which you shouldn't be doing in the first place, but the inverter shuts off the loads, but the inverter, the charge controller, anything that's connected to the battery, regardless of it's turned on or turned off, still draws a phantom load. And if you leave that on there for long enough and the battery voltage gets low enough, the current goes up high enough where the problem, the, 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 the batteries just collapse. Um, so that's what happens. Um, and so, so you want to be careful with that with, 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 with each system. Now, the problem is, is every customer is different. Every customer, there's a different requirement because every customer's load profile tends to be different, okay? So what does LBV, L low voltage disconnect or low voltage cutout do? It shuts up, it turns the inverter off. When the battery voltage recovers, the inverter will turn back on or the, the, the device will turn back on, but you must get above a certain voltage for a certain period of time for it to work. Uh, what, what LVD or LBCO, what doesn't it do? While it removes some load, anything that's connected to the battery still can act like a load. The customer, without knowing it, can also bypass it by simply going to the inverter, turning it off and turning it back to on. So if they see, if they see the inverter's turn, so you, 
the question that the call you'll get is middle of February, the customer will call you up and say, yeah, for some reason my inverter shut off. I cycled it off and cycled it back on. It came on just fine. It worked fine for, worked fine. What do you think was, what do you think that was? That was probably the low voltage disconnect causing the inverter to do that. Um, if you get that complaint or that, that question, you may want to ask your customer to look at their specific gravities and make sure they're properly charging the batteries because the batteries were low to start with. Um, so there are some misleading statements from a few different, few different inverter manufacturers, although that isn't their area error. It's, 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 it's something to be aware of. So, so where do you set it at? Okay. Default settings. No. The default settings for most of your inverters are as low as 1.75 volts per cell. 1.75 volts per cell on an unloaded battery is zero. Um, so you want to be very careful with that. The 10.5, 21 volts, 42 volts, this is a big no-no. You want to have those settings higher. The default settings for most of the inverter companies are way too low. Generally, where you want these settings, you want them somewhere between 1.85 volts per cell and 1.9 volt, 1.95 volts per cell. Um, this ranges. So if you have a 48 volt, 48 volt system, you want it between 44.4 and all the way up to 46.8. This is dependent on your customer. The, the, the more heavier loads that your customer has, the lower this setting needs to be. So if you, ha if you have a customer who is very energy efficient, it doesn't have a whole lot of big loads, a lot of light loads. You can run this a little higher. Um, and what that'll do is that'll, that, that, that protects your batteries more when your customer does over discharge them. So the one thing you want to do is uh, what's most, what mostly prevalent nowadays is customers uh, and inverter manufacturers, truck controller manufacturers, they have these settings in their systems. And what they'll do is they'll say, oh, you got to call the battery company for that. And then you call me and I go, well, you should really call your inverter company to find out exactly what that setting does. I try to explain it to you. Sometimes I don't do a very good job. So it's a good idea to go ahead and take these and write these down. Generally, that's about the window for most people where you want them to be. Again, the more load that you have, you know, the, 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 what you want to do is you want to set it up, experiment with it. If you get intermittent shut off, shuts off, it's got to be lower. If the system, you know, over discharge of the battery, it's got to be a little higher. So you've got to, it's a flexible depending on your clients. All right, so I did promise this one has been actually been just about less than 10 minutes. This is a real quick one. Um, uh, there's no questions. Uh, if you do have any questions though, please feel free to send me an email or to uh, my email address again is steve at Uh You can give me a call. Again, I'm on the road quite a bit, so if I'm not answering, I will return your phone call, or you can post a comment on this uh, YouTube, and uh, we'll be more than happy to uh, respond to your questions, comments, concerns, if you have any. Thank you very much for listening, and have a good day.